with some basic concepts of uh, JavaScript, like core JavaScript, and then we will move on to Angular, and then you know we'll see how it goes. All right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So we'll start with the basic question, like you know. Uh, so just want to know the basic difference between let and where keyword, and it would be good. If you can explain me through some example, you okay. know, by sharing your screen and writing, like yeah. a very small example. That would be great. You can see my screen, correct? Yes, I can see. That. Okay. So while talking about the both the things, so first difference is related mm. to hosting, and second is the block scope and the local scope. So we'll see both the thing. Mm. Where mm. x equal to Okay, so first difference is this. So if I do declare with a var, so we'll we'll see that the undefined will declare over here. So it will print undefined. And for the let, it will print a uh, because we cannot access the let variable before even. Uh, oh, sorry. Let me change it to y. Okay, as we can see, we are getting reference error, so we cannot use uh, that keyword. So if I try to print before after this, so this is the one difference I can say. And if I try to print above x, so what will happen in this case? Say x get hoisted, but y is not going to hoisted. So x will be attached to the global window object, I can say, with the undefined value. And while talking about the y, it will be in the script block, but that that is the separate from the global stack, global uh, window object, I can say. So it will be having the temporal dead zone for it. So we cannot access it from here. So we can see this is the undefined, and second one is the reference error. We cannot access it. And another error, another thing about it. If I create some print function, uh, I'm trying to talk about the now block scope. Hmm. So mm -hmm. if I create let x equal to, let me change some different name now. Let a name equal to uh, one, and if I create some block like this. And if I try to print this here, only in the block, so the both the difference will be different now. If I change it to partial now, so while I will call this function as a print, it will print. This will take as a different scope. Let me print. First. Uh, you can use uh, yeah name. Okay. Hmm. So this is the one kind of the difference I will want to show you. So if you can see that is the first one is it is printing as a undefined. Okay. Mm. So we are trying to okay we are trying to explain I want to print name here. Mm. So you can see that the block having the different scope. So it will be having mm. that block scope. So we cannot access that variable outside of the blocks. Even if we are trying to print the same variable outside it, it is printing it is pointing to some other reference. Means it has a mm. memory location different than the block scope. So right now, if I create this as a var, you will see that what will happen now. Sorry. Okay. So now I have changed to both the var. So you can see mm. that the both the values will change. So because we are not having the block scope for the var element. And while talking about the const, it will be having the same block scope, block level block lo block level of the scope. Uh, but the difference is between both let okay. and const. We have to initialize with something. Okay. Can you can you declare the same var name equal to uh, whatever name uh, instead of var actually like no on the top outside the function print but on the top. Okay. This here, uh, just have name equal to any other value, whatever name value you want to give. Now don't run it. Don't run it. Now can you tell me what is the value? Okay. Hmm. What so will be the it value? It will be undefined then. Okay. If you try to print it. Okay. You can just run this. Run this code. It's 
given x. Actually, we are you trying can to remove x. Yeah. You can remove x. Control x. Remove I can, it. I can print name over there or not? No, you can remove this that console. Okay, okay. That is not required. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Print one more console dot log out uh, after this on line thirteen. Line number thirteen. Let and me minimize this name. first. Console dot log name. I can copy that line. And print. Right. Now what will the value here on line thirteen? So we are pointing as we are creating the single variable, and even we are trying mm. to update the same variable. So what will happen? So mm. this will be the block scope for it. So mm. whatever changes we are doing here, it will be in the block. And this variable mm. will be considered as outside as the another function, so it will print test here. Okay. Can I print it? Yes, 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 definitely. And you can just run it. Yeah, you can see here test. Right. Right. So if I if I ask you uh, now the summary, so hmm. what is the scope of where and what is the scope of let? Okay. So while talking about the let, it will be a block scope, and while talking about hmm. the where, it will be function scope. Got it. All right. Okay. So uh, now uh, let's move on uh, with some more concepts in JavaScript. So there are a few operators, you know, that are available in JavaScript. Uh, we have uh, spread operator. We have rest operator. Have yes. you heard about them? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, now can you just tell me uh, what is the purpose of spread? Okay. Okay. So uh, the spread means so we are spreading the whatever value over there. So suppose I have one array and I want to spread it to create some other array. So I can get that value, extract that value, and I can create another value. So spread means spreading, and the rest is used for I don't know how many parameter will be passing to that function at that time. I will collect to into the single uh, object or array, or I can use that. So this is the difference between both. Can I demonstrate? Yes. Yeah. So uh, create one array. Of numbers like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. Right, and then uh, create one object and spread the your array. Assign your spread you know, using spread operator. Assign that array. Using assign operator. Just a minute. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, using spread operator, assign this array to this object. Okay. Uh, that uh, object should be of object type. Object should be object uh, type. Correct. Now you can spread. It. Just spread array. Nothing else. Okay. Something like this. Yes, you need to put uh, curly yeah. braces to create that object. Curly braces. Sorry. Curly braces. Yeah. Yeah. They are. What it is doing? Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, what will be the uh, value of OBJ here? Don't print. Just tell me. No, like, I according to you, what will happen here? So, in that case, we are passing the reference of each to the object. Mm. And we are extracting it, so it will create a. I'm checking one by one. It will create a like a zeroth index and one zero one index as a two like that something. Mm, absolutely right. If you console dot log obj, you will get whatever you just shared. Right, okay. you can do that if you want to see. All right. Yeah. Right. So it's like it's, it has created the object with those uh, values. Yeah. Key and value. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Uh, let's talk about uh, Angular more now. Okay. Uh, so uh, you have worked on different different versions. I can see right now uh, that a lot of versions you have worked upon. Uh, so. In every version, like it has been evolved from you know from two to seven or eight or right now we have the latest one. So there is one decorator we have at the rate ng module. Yes. 
right you you have used it can you tell me like what is the purpose of that module like what all things it contains what for what we can use it okay yeah so while talking about uh, angular application to bootstrap our angular application into the main.ts mm -hmm. file we have to pass that ng module so that will be the entry point for our the whatever component dependencies will be there inside it so it will get trigger from the main.ts file we'll load that as a module and while talking about the only ng module it is the kind of the decorator it has its uh, declaration whatever the uh, components we have to use inside it then whatever uh, imports we need over there suppose i want to uh, add some modules that is the forms module reactive module http client module common module so that module also we can declare inside the declaration and uh, uh, apart from that we have a providers over there then bootstrap is over there so what component i need to be load into the dom while loading so that is the kind of the bootstrap and we have providers over there so we can pass the some services then we have the entry points always i want to add some dynamic content or dynamic model or such kind of the things into the dom so at that time we use the entry points as well so these are some common things we have to use inside it got it so uh, you share like we add like say for example we want to use forms module i will add it in my at the right ng module like in which uh, in which section i will add that uh in the declaration i think no no in imports, declaration imports i think i got some imports yes yes, yes imports yes, declaration imports. will be the so components uh -huh. declaration will be the components what are components we are using components and components and uh, directives <laughs> and pipes yes right so these things will be part of your declaration yes all right now can i have multiple layer ng module in my application uh multiple ng module hmm. uh, i have not created as a multiple ng module but we usually create a module while lo talking about the lazy loading so we load that yes. module depend upon our uh demands absolutely so yeah. whenever you create your module right yeah. for loading it lazily at so, that time we create a module yes you create a module so at that time we use ng module only right we uh, we load that module from the ng module only with the help of the yeah. so the, i'm not talk, talking about loading but when you create say for example you have three modules in your application mm -hmm. so those three module will contain at the right ng module decorator or not it will be that mm -hmm. ng module decorator yeah there are three modules yeah yeah so and okay. then you are using it in them in your parent one parent. so parent definitely will have an ng module ng right module, yeah and then what about other oh, three sure. uh, child modules so will they have these that decorator or not um, with the module i have not seen what exactly over there mm -hmm. but we do export no, it from... it will be there it will be there okay, okay. so Yes, like because we are creating exporting. a module only, right? So yes. definitely it will contain import, export, components. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So yeah. all those things will be part of your ng module decorator only, right? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. Got it. Now, uh, as you shared about this lazy loading concept, can you tell me what exactly is lazy loading concept? Okay, so while talking about the path and component only in the like uh, the eager hmm. loading, suppose I have some common co components. Uh, that are as soon as the our application get load so it get added attached to the bundle or it get attached to the our module.ts file that the main.ts file will create it for us the model bundle file so it will be having over there so while talking about the lazy loading so we will create a lazy uh, module over there so that will be trigger when we click on that link only suppose i have some my profile module when i click on that that time only it get loaded with the help of the promises with the help of dot then we with the help of the load children we load that module to the dom so with the help of it so we can say that the, it will be not attached to the uh, at the time of the loading so it will be having in the background when we click on that at that time it only can lead to uh, it's going to load into the dom so it will not having the uh, we can say that the uh, it will not accept the much space in the single loading at the time so it will be faster for us uh, so will it be part of that bundle that we have created uh, for, for the application will it be part of that 
say for example you have uh, added lazy loading for one of your module yes now you build your code and you get the bundle so mm-hmm. will that module be part of that bundle uh, no 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 it will load it to at the when we clear uh, when we click on that part so, that time only it get loaded see loading is different thing and then being part of bundle is different thing if we are compiling the code so mm-hmm. we have one bundle now uh, it's it is not necessary that all the code loads at once mm-hmm. right yes correct now we can we can ask and then that part of code will load or execute yes. that is how it works now you just said if we uh, do lazy loading for any module so it will not be part of that bundle so where is that code now mm-hmm. how will i ask that code because my my application is already you know compiled and built yes so, so i think it, so it means be, it will be part of it will bundle, be there but, but it will yeah. not be it will not be loaded or executed by the browser at the time of yes. execution of your application until it is not requested okay, okay. correct got right it. yeah got it so it will be there but it will not be loaded okay, okay. that's the difference right yeah okay okay all right uh, so uh, you shared one uh, concept of promise right so what is that promise what is the purpose okay. of promise yeah so yeah so while talking about the promise so mm. uh, in the javascript suppose i have we usually do write a programming with the help of the asynchronous functionality because we have to do something after some time or i want to some mm. depend upon some situation i have to do something so this kind of the things we do with the help of the asynchronous so javascript the synchronous language so it will load execute by one by one line so suppose i uh, while talking about the callbacks so suppose i have multiple callbacks inside another one and the, it will create a pyramid kind of the structure suppose i have multiple callbacks inside it so to avoid such kind of the things we have a promises over here so with the help of promise we can write a much cleaner code with the help of the mm-hmm. promise so it has a two things over there resolve and reject if it is resolved then we'll get data inside the then block if it uh, if it is get uh, uh, rejected then we have to catch that error into the catch block so with the help of mm-hmm. promises we can say we can write a, a synchronous programming in much better way than the callback helps mm-hmm. got it now uh, i have like a couple of questions around this promise actually right okay. you sh- share like we have resolve and we have reject like and before that you share like no javascript is a synchro- uh, like synchronous, synchronous. Uh, it is execution is synchronous yes now, say for example i don't have a promise so how will i make my javascript code asynchronous okay so like, we can use a set timeout or something related that uh, uh, apis browser api uh not i get see that set timeout will just delay hmm right it will just delay uh but okay how i can actually make it asynchronous promise is one for sure but without using promise is there any other way of doing it i'm talking about javascript okay not okay the okay. angle right so without using a uh promise we have to do asynchronous Hmm. Is there any other way? Like, uh, do you know about it? Like, I'm not saying like you need to know. I'm just asking okay. if you know. Okay. We have async of it as well. Yes, yeah, async so, of it is yeah. one way, right? Yeah, yeah. We do. And then we have promises now. Yeah. Now, uh, you shared about like resolve and reject, right? So, say mm-hmm. for example, I have ten promises mm-hmm. with me, right? And I want to wait for all those promises to get resolved, and then only I should go ahead. Hmm. right hmm. so one way is i should wait for one then second then third and fourth that way yes yes right so one way is whatever we share like i can have 10 promises just one after another and they will resolve and then we can do it yes right can you share a better way of uh, implementing the same thing like once all those 10 promises are resolved we are talking about a uh, you can say a happy part like everything is getting resolved no failure okay, nothing okay, okay. right once all those 10 promises are resolved then only i should execute something how will you implement this using promise okay so uh, we can take that references inside one array and we can use a promise all so with the help of that mm-hmm. we can get that array and the as soon as get uh, 10 array will be over there 10 element of the array will mm-hmm. be over there and we can iterate one by one with the help of the promise all so depend upon that whatever result will we will we'll get one by one data got over. it say for example uh, one of the promise gets failed 
mm-hmm. while executing your promise dot all inside that all one of the promise get failed like the sixth promise get failed what will happen after that like will it go to seventh no, and will start executing or will it return from there it will return from there only so it will not going to okay. execute anyone after that got it now uh, now there is one limitation with not only one there are multiple uh, with promise there are few limitations with promises do you know what are those limitations for promise mm-hmm. so whenever you execute your promise you will get all data at once right yes resolved on depend you'll upon you get all the data yeah, depend you'll upon. get all the data yes or it will get failed ah, right we cannot yes. we cannot emit multiple values like yes, the way we, we do for emit. observable yes yes so okay. what you will use observable in that case observable absolutely yes. so observable is something that actually you know has some advantages over promises like one is what we just discussed right now now can you tell me what exactly observable is first and then we can talk more about it what is okay. observable okay. so we can say that the observable be having a stream of the data like the way okay. we, as we discuss and we have there as a uh, three states over there i think okay. the last one is completed but before two i got <laughs> i forget both the things so it will emit the one data. is error yeah when the one is error like the way we do for catch block uh, there is a complete mm. as well so as as a, whatever the observable data is committing uh, coming from us mm. so when is get completed it will go uh, get out from the block or we can say that mm-hmm. so this is the one uh, in the promise first one is next uh yeah next one next next, next right. error and okay, complete perfectly yeah. fine yeah. Yes, yes. So, Tell me now. yeah. So, observable will be something like that. It will emit some values from the respect to sometimes, or it will get uh, more value from the after one by one. So, mm-hmm. we can get that value into the subs with the help of the subscribe, and we can uh, mm-hmm. do whatever things we are doing over there. So, that kind of the things. Absolutely. Will be- yes. So, uh, what is the purpose of subscribe? Like, wh- why we are subscribing to observable? What will happen if we will not subscribe? okay yeah so as soon as we subscribe to the observable at that time only it get executed so before that it will not going to execute for us mm-hmm. yes absolutely so say for example i subscribe to an observable right mm-hmm. and it is emitting the value after period like after some time like every interval it will i'll get some value right yes uh not every in, after every interval it will execute till it ex- has the last value emitted right okay so for example i want to emit the value uh, after every 2 seconds hmm. so how can i do that uh, we can use the rxjs operator interval hmm. so that will okay. be doing for us that it will return something after some interval whatever interval we pass hmm. over there with the help of the rxjs operator absolutely now uh, as you are talking about operators hmm. so uh, say for example we have the same array like 1 2 3 4 5 like say for example this is an observable right hmm. this is an observable let's take this as an observable okay now i want to uh, uh, i will be subscribing to this observable and uh, i will be getting these values 1 2 3 4 5 individually one at a time hmm. right hmm. what i want to do i want to multiply each value of this observable by 2 and then i should get the result like it will be the result will be and result will be 2 4 6 8 10 okay so how will i do that okay so do you want me to do that or i can just tell uh, you can you can first tell me and then we can yeah. talk more about okay, this okay. so we can do the we can use a map operator so it will transform mm-hmm. the whatever the subscription value coming us and okay so before uh, returning something we are going to uh, transform it then only it will return so if i try to do like the get data dot subscribe before subscribe i will do use a pipe operator because we use a pipe mm-hmm. before using any rgs operator i will use a pipe mm-hmm. and inside that i will use a map it will take some element from there and i can return element into two Uh, or okay. yeah, so that will be a transformative array, and that will pass to the our subscription now. Whatever the result we are printing, so that can be got it. So, uh, so see, whenever we execute this code, whatever you just shared, right? I will get value one by one, one at a time. I will not get 
in an array mm. observable emits value one at a time yes and that is a pur- um, this is the purpose of next function where it goes to next next is like we are asking observable to send us the next value next value right okay so my requirement is i should get the end result as an array so what should i do mm. not as one value but all the values should be in an array and then yes. i should consume it what should i do so we can use uh, of operator there are multiple ways of doing it by the way we can use of operator maybe so it will having all the stream of the which data. operator of operator i'm saying of okay what is the purpose of of operator uh, no but it is going to return observable as depend upon input so of we cannot use then using or talking about other we can use a merge merge map over there so it will uh, merge all the things into the single and then only it will return maybe merge is used for one observable stream or multiple mm. like we have only one stream right we don't yeah, have multiple yeah we have only one correct hmm ah definitely see you are on the right track by the way we will be using some operators and then the simplest op- operator is two array right two array yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So correct, two, correct. two array is operator in uh, you know uh, array chess only that you can use after your map you can just use in the pipe itself you can just add map uh, that two array, two array and then it will return the array instead okay. of single value it will return the array okay right okay. got it okay now uh, let's uh, dig more into this um, okay let's let's uh, let's change the topic uh, okay so uh, say for example i want let me just give you one scenario and then you tell me how we'll implement it right okay. i have a page uh, admin section like that admin section is only been accessed by admin role but not by a an employee role right okay. so how will you make sure that the employee should not access that admin section page in angular what how will you implement it okay so we have to use a uh, auth guard and mm-hmm. we have to pass some role based kind of the routing over there so mm-hmm. i have not done this one like that but uh, okay so i'm just trying to do what i can do mm-hmm. so i can create sure. uh, some role based kind of the thing inside the white uh, coming to the routes only and mm-hmm. uh, as soon as user get logged in will get some jwt token over there i will get anything uh, uh, the information related to the what type of the user and all so that we can compare with the type of the routes right now so that get match then only we can uh, allow him to access the next route means a uh, yeah. process to next yeah so in routes the in routes we cannot have roles mm. yeah so in the directly routes we can not push like that okay so if we create some data and object or something and pass with it okay it will not allow like that yeah, so you shared auth card so what will you do with auth card oh uh, yeah so usually we do check over there so suppose uh, i have one dashboard page okay so and i have some uh, uh, my profile page so i don't want to uh, access the my profile page before login user so if it is login mm. then we'll check that the token is available or not if it is mm. present then we'll go to the uh, whatever the next page of it so you mm. trying to access the my profile page if it is mm. not present then we can uh, send him to the login page so mm. this kind of the functionality we can achieve with the help of the auth guards with the help of the connective inside auth guard there are two uh, methods that you need to implement like either of them do you know what are those methods auth methods i forget actually have you 
I have, have you heard it? about can activate and can deactivate? Yeah, can activate. I heard and deactivate also. Yeah. So this is what you need to implement. Like can activate is means coming whenever the... you are activating the route. Yeah, whenever you are going inside. Yeah, correct. correct. Yeah, got it. No worries. All right. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's talk about uh, the components, right? So. Uh, so we like say for example you have created it like you know like multiple components and you want to send data from one component to another right and it, it happens right mm. so what are the techniques that you will be using to send the component mm. like data from one component to another how will you do that okay so first of all if we have parent child kind of the relationship at that time we use input and output to communicate between both mm. And okay. if we don't have any relation between the both or that are the interrelated components, we can say. So at that time, we sibling can use components. Mm -hmm. Sibling components. Okay. At that time, mm -hmm. at that time, we have one way we can pass to parent and parent to again child to another one. But that is not uh, the correct way to pass data. Mm -hmm. So instead of that doing, we can create one observable sub subject okay. over there with the help of service. We can communicate between the both. So subject can behave as a subscriber as well and the observable as well. So as soon as we emit something in the component A, so the subscriber of the component B automatically get notified. So as we talk about the related to the observable, so it get yes, automatically yes. know about something is happening A. So this is how we can okay. communicate with the help of the subjects. Yes. So, uh, so you know, there is, uh, uh, so say for example, if you subscribe to any observable, it will get the value every time, like it will not stop. Even if you move away from that page, still you will get that value. Yes, yes. Because it has been subscribed. Subscribe, yes. Right. Now, how will you stop that value emitting or, you know, uh, emitting from observable or get, you know, getting it in your component wherever you are subscribing it? Once you move out from the page, how will you, what will you do? Uh, before moving to page, I want to unsubscribe it, correct? Yes, unsubscribe is, is the right word. So that we can use unsubscription into the ng destroy. So while moving to the other tab or other page, it will automatically unsubscribe with the help of the ng destroy. Absolutely right. So that is the best practice. Like whenever you subscribe something and if I'm moving away, yes, think it, you just unsubscribe it. Right? Yes. All right.